Good morning, everybody, and Merry Christmas. So good to have you all with us today. Uh, we welcome everybody who has come together with us in person, and we welcome all of you who are watching online as well. Uh, we hope you had a, a joyful and a peaceful Christmas day, and uh, we appreciate you coming and sharing your gifts with us uh, as we continue to celebrate the birth of our Messiah and Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we're going to be opening today with um, a classic carol, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. So let's stand and praise God. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Oxen us before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and a voice. Know ye hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He hath opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and a voice. No, ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain the everlasting all. Christ was born to save. To us and your son Jesus Christ. We give you all of our lives. We give you our hearts, our souls, our voices. We lift ourselves up to you, blessed because you have come down to us. We thank you, Father, that you have become bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, and that no longer need we fear uh, the slings and the arrows of the enemy, for Christ protects us and saves us. We thank you for the gift of our families and the wonderful times we shared over Christmas. And ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us to celebrate the Christmas season, all 12 days of it, rejoicing in you, proclaiming the birth of the Messiah, and wanting the world to know the good news that you have come to save. Lord, knowing that good news also reminds us that we are less uh, than worthy to the call of Christ Jesus. We do not love as he loved. We do not care for all as he cared for all. We step away from those who are hurting in our world. We just feel like we cannot do it. Help us to remember that with Christ by our side, we can do all things. We give ourselves over to him and his mercy and come before his cross now, uh, professing and confessing the sins uh, of the last week. Um, we bow before you, Lord, and hear now our silent prayers.
Friends, hear the good news. Um, who's in a position to condemn us? Only Christ Jesus. And Christ came to us. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. So know that you are forgiven and be at peace. And you may be seated. Just got a few announcements. Uh, we can look forward on January 7th to a night of prayer. I want to thank Graham Daniscus up in the balcony for putting this night together and organizing everything. Um, it's just going to be a very casual night of, of getting together in the spirit of God's love and grace and peace and turning our hearts and minds to God um, as we listen to some contemporary praise music. Uh, and uh, one part of it is going to be beautiful. It's going to be bringing up um, the pains, the sorrows, um, whatever is, is plaguing us from the last year, uh, bringing them, writing them down, and then we'll be able to gather and, and watch these sorrows and pains uh, go up in ashes to the Lord. We're going to put those into a fire up in the parking lot. So it's going to be a very, very special night, and we hope uh, that you can come and join us. Uh, we have services next week, of course, and Pastor Ken McCary will be preaching, and, and Linda also, his wife Linda, giving a good word as well. So we can look forward to that next Sunday. Small groups are off until uh, the new year, and so um, enjoy some di discipleship in your homes. And uh, we've got a, a, a new project going on, a contest. I went and saw Spider-Man, as I talked about on Christmas Eve, and uh, I want everybody to, when they watch that, Think of the Bible themes uh, in the movie and uh, write to me about the Bible themes and whoever comes up with the most themes uh, uh, will be getting a prize. And so invite you to do that over the holiday season. Uh, that's all I have for announcements. We thank Zafra for doing such a great job with that solo. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Um, are there any other announcements? God's word to us today comes again from Luke chapter 1. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you all about Mary. Mary was a young woman, even younger than Zarha. She was probably um, 15 or so when uh, a really good and righteous man came and proposed to her. I'm going to bring my mask down for a second. And she was 
excited. This seems young, but back in that day, it wasn't too young. It was normal. Uh, and uh, Joseph wasn't a rich man. He wasn't an educated man. But he was a good man. Uh, and so Mary could look forward um, to a life together with a loving, good husband. Um, and if money was short, she could uh, help him with his business, try to build it up, um, find other ways to bring some income into the family. Um, but uh, she was really excited, I have no doubt. But that excitement only lasted for probably a couple of months because then all of a sudden an angel appeared to her and shook her life up like she could have never imagined. The angel told her that she would have a baby even though she had never been with Joseph or any other man for that matter. Uh, and, and she was terrified both by the presence of the angel and she was terrified about what this would mean uh, for her life. What would Joseph think? Surely he would dismiss her, not want to marry her any longer. What would others think with her being pregnant, not being engaged, not being married? But Mary trusted the Lord. Somehow the angel told her, do not be afraid. And she trusted. Uh, I, I think that Mary is an example to us here um, because God comes upon us and confronts us and says to us, you had your plan for your life, but I've got something else in store. And that's really, really scary because we want a simple good life and things might be going very, very well. And then all of a sudden, the truth confronts us God's justice confronts us. The word of God mysteriously comes to us about Jesus. And we learn that there's something much bigger for us to be paying attention to. Um, and the, the simple good life, um, advancing in our careers, all good things, yes, but all of those things are going to be put into a much bigger plan. And, and we worry. If I give myself over to this calling of God, what are others going to think of me? All of a sudden, I'm a follower of Jesus, and I haven't been before. What are people out there going to think of this changed life that I have? When we acquiesce, however, and we give ourselves over um, to the call of God, just like Mary did, then beautiful things are going to blossom inside us, just like they did for for Mary. Joseph was uh, somebody who was going to dismiss her, right? That's what Mary thought. What happened? God took care of that situation. God appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, you need to accept Mary. I'm doing something wonderful in her. I know it's hard for you to accept, um, but you need to trust what she is saying to you. Uh, and, and, and Joseph did. He believed in God, he believed in the dream, and uh, he, he continued to love and trust in Mary uh, and marry her. Uh, and friends, uh, when we give ourselves over uh, to Jesus and, and the call of God in our lives, um, yes, we're gonna be afraid of what those close to us are gonna think about us. if They're not followers of Jesus especially. But you know what, those people um, who are good, like Joseph was a good man, and whom we are close to, they are going to accept us and continue to be close to us and continue to love us just as Joseph did with Mary. And even better, we're gonna find all kinds of new brothers and sisters coming alongside us. It, it's a really harsh and lonely world that we live in oftentimes, and it's a really, really cool thing uh, to have a couple of billion brothers and sisters in the world who share our values and who share our commitments and whom God calls to support us and love and care for us if we need support and love and care. 
We asked the confirmands a couple of uh, years ago why they wanted to join the church. And more than a few of them said uh, that they wanted to join because they wanted um, to get together regularly uh, with like-minded peers. Uh, and uh, so this is, this is who we are, friends. We need to get together uh, with um, people who share our values and our commitments. We're social animals, we human beings, so we need to get together regularly uh, with people and play together and uh, enjoy conversation together and work together and cooperate together um, because this is a harsh world that we live in and we need each other. But here's the other half of that. Yes, we're social human beings, but we are also animals. And animals can be vicious to one another. And we see that throughout our broken and fallen world. And so because of that, we need safe spaces to gather together for that play and for that cooperative work. And that's why we seek fellowship with people who share our values and share our commitments to love and to peace and to caring for one another. Well, Jesus grew up and he started prophesying and teaching. And Mary was worried about the harm that was going to come his way because he was a prophet of God. He was already starting to get in trouble with some of the authorities. Uh, and so Mary called a couple of her other sons to go and get him and bring him back home. She wanted to bring him back into the safety uh, of their family life. And, and Mary had to, therefore, relearn what she had already learned when she was a teenager. She had to relearn um, the providence of, of God over her son's life. She needed to remember that just as her plan for her life was not the same as God's plan for her life, um, her, son, her plan for her son's life was not the same as God's plan for her son's life. Jesus needed to broaden the sanctuary of God. He needed to extend the family of God. He needed to reach out to a corrupt and fallen world and make sure that others out there who didn't have the same security and safety that he knew and the people of God knew, that they would come to know that safety, that security, that safety, that peace, that sanctuary. And uh, so Jesus taught her that in a rather harsh way. And you can check out um, all of that in the second half of Mark chapter 3. So here are my charges to you. If you're feeling young, and if you're feeling um, worried about possible futures, and if you have sudden changes going on that are affecting those possible futures, I want you to remember that Mary, as a young person, experienced exactly what you are experiencing. And I want you to do what Mary did, um, which is to remember um, that God is involved in those changes and that God has a wonderful future for you and that things might not be going according to your plan, um, but that if you just hang in there with God, your future's going to even be brighter than you could have possibly imagined, and he's right alongside you. If you're willing to do that in the midst of these changes and this flux, um, you're going to be encouraged, and you're going to be empowered, and you're going to be able to live into the future that God has before you. Now, if God is stirring inside you for the first time, just as God was stirring inside Mary, and you're afraid of, of what that means for your life, um, I want you to, to again, uh, know that you are like so many others who have come before you. Uh, another example is Moses in Exodus chapter 3. God was calling him to go and, and set the Israelites free. And then he was afraid to go back to Pharaoh. Um, but he came to trust, and he didn't believe that he had what he needed inside him to be able to do that. And I want you all to know that God has gifted you um, for the plan that he has for you. 
And I want you to not be afraid. I want you to give yourself over to those stirrings that are happening inside you. They are the stirrings of, of a deeper love, a deeper peace, uh, a deeper commitment uh, to justice. Uh, I also want you to remember that there's the added benefit of, of hundreds of new brothers and sisters, perhaps depending on the size of your community, perhaps even thousands of new brothers and sisters uh, who are there to help you on this journey uh, into the plan of God. If you're middle-aged and your children are starting to worry you and concern you uh, as they venture out into the world more and more, uh, I want you to again look back to Mary. She was experiencing the same things that you are experiencing. And um, you just need to remember that while you can't control your children as they grow up and that you have to let them go just as Mary had to let them go, that when you're willing to do so uh, and trust in God's power and plan for their lives, um, you're going to be able to return to peace. Remember that God has them in God's loving hands uh, throughout their lives. Uh, and then lastly, to everybody else and, and everybody who I've already mentioned as well, I want just all to gather together regularly uh, in safe spaces, and the church is one of those safe spaces, um, to have spiritual conversations together um, and to cooperate uh, together. And then after we get together and have safe conversations about God um, and the most important things in life, uh, then we need to venture out. We need to remember that this is not just about us. Um, this is about hurting people out in our world um, who also need to know about the sanctuary of God, the peace of God. And we need to reach out and invite them into the one family of God and call them to commit to the same love and justice, um, the same way of Jesus Christ uh, that we know is the way for the world. Um, not because we are better for them, not because we know it all, um, but because um, this is the, the way that we believe and we have to live according to our beliefs, the way that we believe we can help them find um, the best life that they can possibly have. Um, so let's do all this, um, remembering that the word of God has become flesh, bone of our bone, um, so that we might reach out as the body of Christ Jesus um, and help others to know um, that God walks alongside them, cares for them, and has a wonderful future in store for them. Uh, to God be all the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus now and forevermore. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. So we had a very hard year, not only uh, the pandemic, um, which has been the worst part of it all, up to over 800,000 lives lost in our world, and so many people hurting, grieving. We need to respond to the word of God um, by the offering of our lives, day after day after day. Uh, we at the church uh, had a flood on September 1st, um, and the basement uh, had to be refloored, and we've got all kinds of extra expenses. So I invite those of you who are watching uh, at home um, to make an online contribution uh, because we need your help. Uh, I want to thank you and, uh, and wish God's blessings upon you. Uh, and let's now stand and, and sing of the child who came to us and was born to us. Um, and the wise men who offered their gifts um, in honor and admiration of him.
What a blessing it is, O oh Lord, to um, offer ourselves uh, to you, to offer um, everything that we are, uh, to offer the gifts that you have given to us, um, to our brothers and sisters uh, here gathered, um, to go out into this world um, and, and offer ourselves in love and peace to those who are hurting. Uh, we thank you, Father, that Jesus Christ shows us the way. And we pray, Father, that um, as we celebrate this Christmas season, uh, that we would regularly turn our hearts and minds to him to receive the strength and the solace that you want to pour out upon us. Uh, and then having been nourished by your spirit, uh, go into our workplaces, go out into our neighborhoods, um, go to our churches uh, and find uh, wonderful news to share uh, find wonderful ways to bless others. Uh, we pray now for our loved ones who are hurting in some form or fashion. We know so many who are grieving, struggling with their families, struggling at work, struggling with finances. Uh, and we pray, Father, now lifting them up in silence uh, along with places in the world that need your help um, or lifting all of them up with our voices raised. All who are grieving, the Klein family. James Tway, Sina Pollock. We thank you, Father, that you are our Emmanuel, that you have come to us, and that you are with us, that you are with all those we have lifted up, and we pray that you would bring the healing that we are asking for and all the help necessary uh, for people to rebuild their lives, to be restored. And we ask it all in and through the, the great physician the one who came to us in Christmas, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, enjoy a, a new Christmas carol and get to know it and join in whenever you're ready. Story. 
Adoremus Dominum means come, let us adore us, let us adore him, the Lord. And so I want to thank you for coming uh, and adoring the Lord. Um, and now I want you to go out uh, into this world of God's um, and adore others, for Christ is within them. And the way that you bring Christ to life in them is by showing them love, the kind of love that God showed the world in Christ Jesus. Please receive a blessing. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. And God's people say, Amen. And we have an announcement. Okay. Thank you. We have fellowship over in the kitchen, so come and join us for, for coffee hour. <laughs>